Hi, it's Kerner Text here with the next video in the series about building Beyond Linux from scratch 9.1. So in the last video, um, I showed how uh, there was a fault with um, Make CA, which was down to, um, well, partly, partly the version not allowing uh, multiple threads when compiling it and also there seems to be a problem that it's not in the uh, errata page for BLFS so um, my instructions in the video prior to that got around that but as I said in the last video the, the previous video with the fix in is probably the best one where you just run the instructions to install but using the minus J1 to force the, the build to run on one thread so um, you might be wondering, well, you know, we went through sort of nearly four hours, I think it was, of uh, video just to install one package with all its depend dependencies, and I realised that maybe I had gone around in a rather long-winded way installing packages and making notes of packages that would need to be rebuilt for various reasons. Um, what I'm going to try and do this time instead of going down so deep in the dependency tree is to stop a little bit higher up if I can because it seems that a lot of the dependencies ultimately come back to needing um, some sort of X windowing system and therefore some of the huge packages that um, well also rather some of the packages that need it are, are quite a, quite a, some of the quite big ones so um, I'm going to try and when I go down dependencies, I'm trying to fulfil with my my rules for building where um, I'm installing optional and uh, recommended packages as far as possible. I'm going to stop higher up and um, make a note of again of those packages why I've stopped and why I want to rebuild them, and hopefully we'll be able to make a little bit more progress. Um, before we get to actually building the X windows, because obviously, there's, you know, as I say, we spent four hours or so just doing dependencies for one package. It'd be nice to get on, finish the security side, and then actually start concentrating on getting the um, X org installed and get some windowing done. Um, and also, you may also be wondering like, why concentrate so much on one package. Well. It's it's relatively important. The MakeCA provides these certificates, um, and one obvious place that you'll see a difference has been made is with the um, uh, websites that we visit in links that um, have the HTTPS protocol. So previously, when we were accessing these, we we're getting warnings about the um, no, no certificates. Uh, whereas now, if um, uh, actually, I don't think the Linux from scratch uses HTTPS. Let's try something like um, BBC. So if I go to HTTP, first of all, it will probably redirect to HTTP. HTTPS, yes it has, but you notice this time it hasn't asked me or said that the there's no certificates do you want to carry on. So that shows, that's without any rebuilding or anything, it shows that the links is able to use the certificates that are installed, it's, it's found them. I don't know the mechanism exactly, but obviously it was looking from before, wasn't finding any. Um, now they exist, we've installed them with MakeCA, they exist. Um, and therefore it's it's now using them. The same with wget, I think we've only actually um, downloaded one file from HTTPS as I remember. Um, let's see if I can attempt to download it again. It would have been probably uh, Yeah, I can't remember. It might have been GPM, possibly. Let's have a look. Uh, 
search with the right keyboard, GPM. No, let's try WGET then. I can think it would be WGET, but maybe it is. Yes, it is actually. Just type this in. Um, you'll see that WGET also previously saying we needed to actually add a switch to be able to download um, the file, but now it won't come up with that. Um, just see where I'm again. WD, yep, so WGET HTTPS colon ftp.gnu.org forward slash gnu forward slash wget forward slash wget dash one dot two o dot three dot tar dot gz so if I enter that and you see straight away it's gone and it's downloaded it so it's again it's it's recognizing that there are certificates that exist and it's and, and allowed to um, verify that the um, website we're connecting to is, is you know is valid. So um, let's get rid of both. Then I don't think we need him to die. Um, that unzip that's there. I'm not sure if that's something I've downloaded into the wrong place or not. So let me just check to see. Oh, I've already copied it, so that's okay. So I'll just get rid of these two. Yep, and I'll go to the sources and BLFS ready to move on. Okay, so so yeah, we've done make CA. So the next one I'm definitely going to install is Cracklib, and this is a library as it says to enforce strong passwords. So let me go to my alternative virtual console and log in to get the website up. Read online. Crack clip. So again, yeah, we've got the first link here we've got is HTTPS. So when I press enter, it's just going to doubt. Oh, it's asking me about cookies. So just say A to accept the cookies. And it should just, yep, say download. Fine, do that. Save to disk. And again, I'm in the wrong place. So let me come out of here. Let's go into where we want to download these two. That's better. Okay, read online, next page is first link, and then move down to crack group again. So that's done. I've got additional downloads. Right, okay, it's a word list for English speaking countries. So um, it, there is another link there if you need words in a different language. And as it says there, you can add in as many or as few word lists as you want to install. So I guess if you wanted to be totally paranoid about this, um, you'd want to probably install all of them to cover all different languages, assuming they can be um, represented in your particular language. Um, and it says there about the word lists and what they're good for and so on. Oh, it does actually say, no, the word list suitable for spell checking, not suitable for crack lib word lists in countries with non-Latin based alphabets because of word based keystroke combinations that make bad passwords. So my, my, maybe what I just said about downloading all of them is probably not a good reason for, for this reason here. Right, so let's start installing it. Um, didn't download this, did I? So I'm going to download this dictionary. 
Being to speak English, it'd be good for me. Go back and start installing after I've extracted it. Okay, so now we can begin. Um, I'm just going to look at the configure commands, see what options there are. So I'll copy this actually, first of all. Just the configure in case there's anything else to add. Put it on a new line. So that's the default location of the dictionary, disable static. No, it doesn't actually look like there's any extra options, so just press enter there. And again, you see this has got the double ampersand. I don't need to check that said ran OK. It must have done because the configure is actually executed. So that shows that the, the fact that the configure ran shows that the said command was successful. And obviously the configure command is completed without any errors, so that's fine. So all I need to do is do make now to build it. And now install it. That's completed, so I'm going to copy the rest. That's fine. And then it says to issue the following commands as the root user to install the recommended word list and create, and create the crack lib directory. So that's this bit here. Just look behind here, yeah, that's okay. Make sure that the um, whole command's been copied correctly, and it has. So I can press enter. And it's just a couple of warnings about it looks like about certain words are not in the correct order in the dictionary, but that's just a warning, so that's fine. If desired, check the proper operation of libraries and unprivileged user by issuing the following commands. So let's do control D come out and run make test and that looks like that has passed so now it says if you're installing cracklib after your LFS system has been completed and you have shadow package installed which do because uh, we installed it during the LFS installation you must reinstall shadow and if you wish to provide strong password support on your system if you're now going to install the Linux PAM package, you may disregard this note that Shadow will be reinstalled after Linux PAM installation. So there's nothing else to do with Cracklib. So the thing we need to do is to go straight to the Linux PAM package. Um, and as it says, that, that will have a note saying to reinstall Shadow. So this is quite a critical part to do because um, if this bit goes wrong, we could lock ourselves out of the machine if there's some error. So I'm just going to mark off Cracklib as installed on my list and then what I should do is open up Linux Pam in another tab. I'll tidy this one up. So you see Pam is Pluggable, pluggable authentication modules and it's just an enhanced security feature and it says some optional packages here one of which is Cracklib so that's already installed and there's a couple of others here Barclay DB and libtr TIRPC and Predlude you can see it's in slightly different blue and it's off, uh, it's a bold so it's off the book 
so I won't be installing that. And to rebuild the documentation, now this FOP we've come across already. Um, I think that had an issue with, yeah, needs a patchy ant. Oh, an optional X window. Let's have a look at ant. I think this needed Java. Yeah. Oh, now the thing I did find was Java. This is a Java binary. Oh no, it's got an XORG library dependency. Yeah, we can't do FOP at the moment. It would be nice to run um, to get this installed, so we, we can re we can rebuild our own documentation. Just you know, it's this BLFS is all about, and LFS is all about customizing your own system. So it would be nice to come back and rebuild this package and rebuild the documentation, so we know that what we produce is is our own. Not absolutely necessary, um, I know, but it's um, it's just nice to know that everything you're doing is is as mu as much as possible stuff that you've created yourself or generated yourself. So I'm going to make a note to reinstall Linux Pam. Um, so that we can uh, rebuild the documentation when FOP is installed and. Uh, by definition, when XORG is installed as well as Java. Okay, XORG, Java, FOP, etc. So we've got two other optional that we need or can add. Barkley DB has got TCL and Shy Utils, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, this lib TIRPC has got MIT Kerberos for the GSS API, so let's have a look at that one. Alright, that's got quite a few depend optional dependencies. <coughs> so Deja with new GNU for testing. Uh, actually, let's do this the right way as usual. JLG, GNU PG, key utils. Right, open LDAP. Um, I'm assuming as a personal user, you would probably wouldn't need that sort of facility. Um, didn't say it's needed for anything in particular. Whereas RPC bind used during the test suite. So that's one we'll use. Decided I'm not using Valgrind or Valgrind, however you say that, and the rest are off the page, so. Right, some sort of synchronized facility. The system like NTP is required since Kerberos won't authenticate if there's a, no, if there's a time difference between Kerberos client and KDC server. Okay, so this looks like this might be getting quite involved already. Um, let's look at NTP. Okay, it looks like that needs a few, and that needs something that Pam has got Pam as well. So I think this might be another package to install at a later time. Yeah, it's optional, so I'm going to make a note of this one as well. To reinstall lib tirpc when can be installed. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the Barclay one. It's got two dependencies, Shyutil's got none and TCL has got none either so that's okay. So let's start with this libtirpc under chapter 17. Okay so network and let's go to the book here chapter 17 
this tap. So let's download it. Okay, it's one of these ones on the SourceForge, so we need to page down a few pages so that we find the yeah there it was problems downloading I think it was yeah that one there press enter page down until yeah we've got the direct link highlighted so press enter there so I've just put a cookie again so just accept all and there we go I can download it now And save to disk. Back to the BLFS page. And we can start extracting that. And we can start copying the Uh, command. So the command explanations, there's no extra, but it does explain this disable GSS API. The switch is needed if no GSS API is, is installed. Remove this switch if you have one installed, for example, MIT Kerberos, and you wish to use it. So I'll just see what that does again. Okay. So we just uh, copy the command as it is, and I'll copy with the make command as well. So there's no test suite, so I'll just become the root and copy the installation instructions. And it looks like that one's complete, a short one. Okay, we'll get rid of that one. Now we do show utils, let me mark that off my list. Lib. Why has it gone? Lib to PC, there it is. So back to the browser, let's go back, what chapter is this in? Chapter 11. So let's just page back a few times. Show you tools 415.2. So let's download the package, download, save. Go back to installation. So there's a few commands to run in. There's no other explanations for the configure, so it's quite a straightforward package by the looks of it. Okay, let's run make check to test it. And that's a pass, so let's become the root and run make install. 
and that's complete. So now onto TCL. Uh, well, let me cross this one off. Show you tills. And this is chapter thirteen. TCL eight six ten. Okay, there's another one at Source Forge. I think there's quite a few of these. So yeah, we're gonna have to. I'm not sure this link at the top if it's any use or not. Um, let me try it. I'm not sure if it does work or not. Oh, it looks like it does actually. That's a lot easier. I've used. Um, it might be wget actually. Sometimes you fetch these long, strange URLs where they're passing extra information, and, and either it doesn't download or it corrupts the file name and you have to specify the file name or rename it after you've downloaded. So let's see what happens with this one. This might be a, the way to do it. There's still no files so I've noticed using the direct links that I've done up till now has been quite slow and this is no slower even though the, the mirror is quite close. Geographically speaking, anyway. Okay, that looks like that might have worked. So the acid test would be when we extract it. And yeah, that seems to be fine. So that's worth knowing. So let's get the web page back again. Additional documentation. Okay, let's download that as well. Press enter to accept that link. Yep, download. Okay, that's good. So as it says, you might recall that TCL was installed in Linux from scratch, but it was during the um, uh, temporary stage in Chapter 5, so it means that because it wasn't installed in Chapter 6, it's, it's not available at the moment on the system. So that's why we reinstalled it here. In fact, I believe we reinstall uh, Deja GNU as well at some point um, for as an optional dependency again uh, because because of the same reason it wasn't it was only installed in the temporary phase and not in the final phase in chapter six so let's extract the documentation that looks like it's done and install TCR by running the following commands. Let's carefully copy and paste all of this. Oh, didn't check to see if there's any other options. No, there isn't any, so that's okay.
Okay, that's done. Let's run the tests. Okay, that seems to have completed successfully all the tests. Let's just scroll back to see if there's any more information. Let's get the whole screen up. So failed zero, so yeah, there's nothing to be concerned about there. If you test skip, there's not a problem. So let's go back to instructions as the root user. And 
install package. And if you download the optional documentation, install it with these commands. And that's complete. So you notice we've gone into a subdirectory here called Unix, so we need to go back to before we can tidy up. So we've got Barkley DB to install. Oh, this was in chapter 13. Let's mark that off. TCL. And now we're going to chapter 22. So it's quite a big package, 34 megabytes. So let's start by extracting it. All right, it doesn't start with bark, it starts with DB, the file name. Okay, so let's just check the config. Pat one eight five CXX DBM. And there's another. Oh, hang on, there's one here. And there was TCL support in DBM crates. Right, okay. And there's one to enable Java support. Currently it's broken with Java 10.x. So well, I believe BLFS um, installed Java 11 or 12. I can't remember which now. Um, so there's more one to come back and build, even though it's not got. Maybe that's why that Java's not an option. Um, I mean, it's probably not necessary unless you want to program in Java to access uh, the Barclay DB database. But um, again, it's nice to be able to install as much as possible just for demonstration purposes. It's it's up to you whether you want to install it or not. But I will make a note expecting that to fail within a message like that. And the fact that it's not been noted as an optional dependency. So let's just put a note in my pad here regard the db after java okay so but i do need to add in the enable tcl and with tcl equals user lib because we've got that installed so let's get the instructions up So first we've got a sed command. And let's just check that when okay it did. Um, yeah, let's get the page back up. And now we can copy this partial config command 
put space in, go down and add in these two options here. And press, oh, let me just check again because I can't see that yet. We use a little bit, it's copied OK. So now I can press Enter. So now we can run make. And that's built. So now we can become the root. Let's get back up a page and copy the command so it's everything here with the right mouse. Let's check that. Yep, that's okay. Press enter. And when that's installed that's the ownership oh that's the finish Files it's changing the ownership of there. Okay, it's done. And again, we're in another subdirectory, so we need to go up to to remove the package. So now we can install Linux PAM. Um, oh, let me note this one is complete. TV. And Linux Pam's in security, isn't it? That's down here. So we've now got all the optional um, packages installed, not looked any further. I think we've got all these packages installed apart from FOP, as I say FOP has a dependency basically on Xorg ultimately, so nothing can be done about that. So let's fire ahead and install PAM. I don't know if you noticed the Linux PAM archive has got a capital L in the Linux. So that's worth remembering when we extract it. Let's get the documentation. So let's extract it now. So we want the file, so it's .tar xz. And we need to copy this command. I'll just show on here, this command here, to install documentation. done. If you instead want to regenerate documentation, fix the configure script so that it detects link if installed. Well, we're not regenerating because we haven't got all the dependencies, so we'll just move on to the configure. Let's check for any extra configure commands. So use this disable regenerate doc if this if you do not want to rebuild documentation. Oh it looks like FOP is only for PDF documentation. But we'll we'll disable the regeneration because um we can we might as well do that when we install the PDF as well. 
and we've got FOP installed. So we need to copy partial command here. factor and to be quite honest what that's saying down here yeah it looks like I'm in yellow oh, I suppose we could do it just for demonstration really um, to install the documentation if it doesn't need fault we can build everything except for the PDF so but we need to run this setting so what we're going to have to do is start again so we go back up again um, right we, let's not run that command because we're going to regenerate it So if instead you want to regenerate documentation, run this setting. So let's do that. It just exercises more of the code. But if it doesn't work, at least we have got the documentation. So in theory, we should just be able to run all of this in. I'm not going to though, I'm just going to run the configure just to see if there's any information at the end which we can inspect before we actually start the build. That didn't tell us anything, so let's just run make. Now, because we're going to reinstall it at a later date, um, which I think I've got a note of, yeah, um, there's a warning there about not needing to create this PAM file here as you do at the moment for the first installation because we'll have another one existing and it's a bit more comprehensive than that and also to back up a couple of I don't know if they're files or directories probably files but that's something to worry about when we reinstall so we've done the make to test results suitable PAM etc other configuration must exist Um, let's say how to test it. To test results, suitable power mother in configuration of power must exist. First, alright, oh, okay. Alright, so we need to install. Oh, I see that's doing the directory in this other file, that's fair enough. So let's copy this all in as the root, of course. So, root. So that's the temporary other file we need. Now run test by issuing make check. It doesn't say whether to do it. It doesn't say to do it as root, so I'm going to come out of root and run the tests as we usually do as the normal user make a check and obviously if this fails then it needs to be run as a root but it doesn't say it has to be so I assume it's the right thing to do to run it as the normal user and it appears to be okay there's no errors yeah I imagine with these multiple results it would fail immediately and not carry on to do the rest so I'm assuming without inspecting the whole lot that everything's fine so as it says here only in the case of first installation remove the configuration files earlier by issuing the following command and that's because we are going to create some configuration files in a moment and we want to do that on a working PAM system that would be quite serious if we did that so let's remove that other file and finish the installation.
Okay, so now we move on to configuration. Um, it gives an example file, but it does actually give us um, some generic uh, configuration files to put in which work. So we can start just copying this information. So that's that first bit. Then it says the remaining generic file depends on whether cracklib is installed. If it is installed, use this configuration. So that's the next configuration after what we've just done. So let's copy that. Minus. It's done. So there's a note here about um, default configuration PAM correctly will allow mul multiple case passwords as short as six characters, even with the min len value set to 11. And if that's a problem, then you need to determine if that's acceptable to you or not. So I guess if, if you're just doing this as an educational run through, it's probably not a problem. But if you're going to be using your BLFS system, for serious use then you may want to consider that that note so if Cracklib is not installed so we can skip that bit on to the next page now a restrictive PAM other configuration file with this file programs that PAM aware will not run unless a configuration file specifically for that application is created so this is something we want to copy in So this is the other file that we created earlier but didn't have so many entries and this is one they're warning about when we rebuild PAM not to overwrite. Of course if we do then we can at least come back here and add it assuming it hasn't been modified since. So that's the end of Linux PAM installation and consider, uh, configuration so I'm going to mark that off on my list. And now we go straight on to the shadow package. So come out of this and clear up. And we'll move on to shadow. Oh, there was a link there, wasn't there? Never mind. So we've already installed shadow, but this is now reinstalling it with um, Cracklib and Pam. So I'm not sure if this is the same version as we've installed or if it's a newer one. So we'll just use the link that they've given. I imagine it'll be the same version. So the requirement is we've got PAM or Cracklib. So we'll see which one gets used or how we specify in a moment, I imagine. So installation, let's extract it first. Make sure it will extract. The installation commands below are for installations where lib, uh, Linux PAM has been installed with or without Cracklib and Shadow has been reinstalled to support the Linux PAM installation. If you're reinstalling Shadow to provide strong passwords for using Cracklib library without Linux PAM, ensure you add the with lib crack parameter configure script low and also issue a confirm command. So it looks like the recommended way is to just, just to install it um, with Linux PAM and it doesn't seem to matter whether you've got Cracklib or not installed. So let's go and fetch this command to reinstall um, Shadow. There's an extra option down here, is there? Oh no, that's that's in there. It's just explaining why it's there. So we can copy all of this uh, from here. Just going to clip behind to make sure that's copied OK. Yeah, we've got double ampersand on the end. So let's bring that back. Copy 
the rest of that command down to there. That looks okay, and let's run it in. Well, that's finished, so let's become the root and make install. So shadow stock configuration for the user ad utility may not be desirable for your installation. One default parameter causes user ad to create a mailbox for any new user. So this is what we did before in Linux from scratch. It's obviously with new installation, it's overwritten our settings. So let's put this set in to put it back to how it was so it doesn't create the mailbox. Obviously if you want that, that's fine. Just don't do this command. So configuring Linux Pan to work with Shadow. The rest of the page is devoted to configuring Shadow to work properly with Linux Pan. If you do not have Linux Pan installed and you reinstall Shadow to support strong word passwords via the Cracklib library, no further configuration is required. So because we're going down the lib Linux Pan route, we do need to do some more configuration. It says here about how it can be a complex task, gives you some links, and then we've got some configuration for the uh, binaries that Shadow has installed. So we need to copy these configuration files in. So the first one's this huge uh, configuration here. So let's copy that in. That's in. Now there's some uh, configuration, other configuration files that go into the pandd directory, so there's quite big ones here. So this is all for login. Be sure not to copy past the EOF because that indicates the end of the section. So it might be worth just double checking that we've copied and pasted correctly. So I can't go back any further than that on the scroll back. I'm just quickly checking that I haven't duplicated, like pasted twice any of this information. Looks okay, so press enter, that's done. So there's a short one for password. And there's a reasonably big one for SU. And just quickly give it a an eyeball to make sure it's been copied. Either you've not missed anything, or you've not right clicked and pasted two copies of the same part of the clipboard. That's okay. Change. Looks fine. And then we've got other common programs. So basically all these programs here in, in this list, um, they all share a similar um, configuration as changeable because it looks like for each one of these programs they're copying the same configuration that Change uses. So that's why we can Add these all in in a few lines. 
So that's done. So a big warning here. At this point, you should do a simple test to see if Shadow is working as expected. Open another terminal and log in as a user, then SU to root. If you do not see any errors, then all is well, and you should proceed with the rest of the configuration. So let's do that. And I'm going to get, open up a third terminal. So it says log in as a user. So let's do that. That's good. There's no errors. And then SU to root. SU, put the password in. Okay, let's try that again. SU. Right, so I've got a problem. You have to receive errors. Does receive errors. Stop now and double check the configuration files manually. One obvious reason for an error is the user is not in the group wheel. Okay, that makes sense because um, if I do groups, kernel text only has its own group, so that's probably why that's not working. So I'm going to log out of this, go back to my first terminal and run in this command here. They've got user mod a minus g minus wheel. Uh, wheel and all this does is adds a supplementary group to the user and that group is wheel so user mod minus a for add supplementary group is wheel and the user is kernel text that's the one to log in on okay why isn't that worked minus g it should be and that's okay so now I'm going to go back to my Virtual Terminal 3, log in as my normal user again. You will have to log out because if you stay logged in, then the change won't be seen. So now I'm going to try to SU again. Type in the password and it's worked. And breathe a sigh of relief as well. Um, any other error is a sign of an error in the above procedure. If You can also run the test suite from the Linux PAM package to assist you in determining the problem. If you cannot find and fix the error, you should recompile Shadow add in the without libpam switch to the configure command. If that's the scenario is remaining, you're unable to log into your system. So hopefully you don't have any problems with that yourself. So I'm going to log out of this third terminal. Don't need that anymore. Go back. Instead of using the etc login access file for controlling access to the system, Linux PAM uses the PAM access.so module along with the etc security access.conf file. Rename the login access file using the follow command. So we need to do this. So let's copy this bit. Rename login access this bit here. Okay, it's renamed it and configuring resource limits instead of using the etc limits file for limiting usage of resources system resources Linux PAM uses the PAM limits.so module with the etc security limits.conf file rename the etc limits file using the following command so they're just renaming them adding an oops wrong mouse again uh, adding dot no use to the existing file, so the existing file will still exist. It just won't be the same name. It will have dot no use on the end. So it just indicates if you're browsing that that file is not in use. Um, let me show you that. Yeah, there you go. It's it what it was limits as it specifies in the manual, and now it's limits dot no use to indicate that it's not to be used or it's not being used. So that's Shadow and Linux PAM installed and it's all tested working so we shouldn't have any problems logging in in the future. So get rid of Shadow, go back to Cracklib and move on to the next package. So as I say, I'm only installing packages that are necessary to install at the time, Linux PAM being one of them. Cracklib is another and makes CA. So we'll just move on. So this is for encryption of block devices, so that's something you may want to do, but um, that will come up if you are installing the software for things like encrypting block devices. I'm not going to do that in the moment. 
Sara Sazzle again. I think this is dependency of some packages, so I'm not going to bother with this one now. Same with GNU PG. GNU TLS again, it's optional for some packages. Although there are some user space tools, it says there, so I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. Same thing with GP GME, not going to bother with that. Right, this have ged or have have ged. Um, it contains a daemon that generates an unpredictable stream of random characters and feeds the dev random device. So this is this is one that will be useful to have if any program that we build or install or run that uses dev random wants some random data. Then obviously this is a good one to to use. So there's no requirements, so we can go ahead and install this straight away. So let's clear up Shadow. And fetch the package. Um, FGD, GD. Looks like it's a nice small file. Okay, there's no information, any extra information for the configure, so we just basically copy what's on the screen. Right, so let's test what we've just built. And that looks, yep, sample looks good, it says. So it's become the root. Oh, it looks like that wheel group has worked immediately. I, I wouldn't have thought this would have worked, so I was wrong there. And not, normally when you make changes to the user, the um, the changes aren't don't get affected unless you log in again, so... Um, that's quite interesting actually. Yeah, it still says kernel text. Oh, maybe because I'm still on the old login, so maybe the best thing would be for me to do here would be to log in again. Just so I get that groups, uh, that wheel group in my profile. Yeah, there it is now, there now. Um, just so I'm using the Linux PAM code. Uh, no, sorry, that's from Okay, so root and we want to copy this bit here. So that's installed. Now we need to install some boot scripts. So we need to go back up and if you remember we left that directory there. So we can go into there and just run make install hyphen have jed. And we can also start it now as well. Um, start. That's good. Come out of root and clean up. So that's that one done. So let's mark that off. That's a nice simple one. So I'm just going to go through these IP tables for filtering. Won't be doing that. I think basically it's mainly for the firewall, I'm not going to be installing a firewall. Um, it does say here in the description it is quite a complex, or can be quite complex, although the looks of the instructions have got 
configuration depending on what sort of firewall you want to set up. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of extra information there, so that's quite a complex thing to be getting on with. So the libcap package was installed in LFS, but Linux PAM support is desired. The PAM module must be built, so we can do this. We've got Linux PAM installed. It's a requirement. Um, we, we may as well take advantage of this security. We've installed it. Let's use it. So let's go to this libcap page now. Again, we've probably, as it says, already installed it. So we've probably already got a copy of this, but let's just download one for BLFS. I assume it's the same version, but in case it isn't, at least we'll have an appropriate version. If you're upgrading libcap from previous version, use the instructions in the LFS libcap page to upgrade libcap. If the LAM, if the PAM module has been built, it will also have to be picked up. Um, okay, so let's just check to see if we are upgrading 2.33. Oh, this is the SVN version. So let's view the. Oops, wrong. Um, on keyboard again. That's this one I want. Read online. Stable. And we want to find the. Uh, okay. Is there? Two three one. Yeah, we're installing two three one, so it's not an upgrade. So we can ignore that note. So let's extract it. And install. I'm just going to type this in, I think, this one. Minus capital C, Pam underscore cap. Oh, I see it looks like with this make command, what we're doing is we are just compiling the module for Pam rather than the whole package. And that's why it's saying if you're upgrading from a previous version, you'll need to um, basically reinstall it, recompile it, reinstall it to upgrade. So that, that makes sense, that note now to me. Okay, that was nice and quick. It's no test suite, so it's just a couple of install commands. As the root. Configuring libcap in order to allow Linux PAM to grant privileges based on positive capabilities, you need to add the libcap module to the beginning of the etc PAM sysl file. So let's copy that in. So what they're doing, they're taking a backup first. And then making the alteration. So and it says additionally you'll need to modify the ETC security capability font uh, conf file to grant necessary privileges to users and utilize the set cap utility set capabilities on specific utilities as needed. See man eight set cap and man three cap from text for additional information. Okay, so there's no examples given there, so we can assume that we don't actually need to do anything at the moment unless you know you have a specific need to make those changes. So that's done. Let's cross that off on my list. The cap is done. And we'll move on. Well, obviously, the next one, Linux Pan, we've done. So we can skip that. LibOA auth. Yeah, that looks like another library. And that's another library. This is something I think I'll plan to build later. Yep. Nettle is a library. NSS we've already installed. 
So open SSH. Now, um, this package, as you can see, has got options for the X Windows system. Usually, what I usually do when I'm installing Beyond Linux from scratch is I do virtually everything remotely from open SSH through, through an SSH link via another computer. Um, in fact, it's probably the only, apart from maybe WGET, because there's no FTP link to fetch it. Um, it's probably the only other package I install before, you know, at the, at the terminal. Um, as I'm doing this slightly differently from the command prompt on basically the single computer, and I'm trying to get as much installed as possible, so the option that X Windows is here in Mick Kerberos, which is something I'm going to install. I'm not going to install this now, but I'm going to make a note to install it at a later time in my list of things to install, which is growing quite big now. Um, so I'm just putting a note to install it after Xorg is installed. So I'll skip over that one for now. Uh, P11 kit we've installed already, so we can skip that one. Pole kit, um, I'm not sure this is absolutely necessary to install now. Shadow we've installed. SSH ask pass, that's obviously something we've got SSH, so we can't do that. Tunnel. So it's the encryption over tunnel, not bothered about that particularly. Uh, sudo, now, sudo is another one I'd install. Um, again, there's a few optional dependencies, so it's, and again, another one I'll be installing at another date. So I'm going to make another note. I'm going to install that now, it's quite useful to have. So, rebuild sudo after Kerberos. But yeah, apart from that, LDAP won't use, MTA might be. Possibly something to install when I reinstall it. Actually, um, there's a chance even that one of these might be installed due to another de dependency, but I can deal with that when I come back to install sudo again. So back to the browser. Let's get down to sudo. Let's download it. Okay, so let's extract it. And let's check the configure. So all these are explanations of what's... Okay, the only extra one is without PAM. Well, we've got PAM, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's start by copying in this said to fix a problem with the compilation or installation. And run the config command. So you can see there's a, a prompt there which you could customize for yourself if you wish, wish to. Um, but I think I'll just take the default. It's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so let's build it. And 
and to test the results there's a complicated command to run there so I'll need to get this window out of the way to see what I'm doing be careful not to copy the full stop after the log although it might not make a difference but it could possibly just bring back the browser Okay, looks like that's all worked and check the results with grep failed dot dot make check dot log so it looks like none have failed so that's good I've got a complete pass so we can install this now uh, Already you trying to use sudo and haven't installed it yet. So let's copy this. Okay, that's finished. There are many options to see those config command check configure. Okay, so there are other options there as well we could have looked at. As, as is the usual case, there's normally other options that get mentioned in the book. I think they just mentioned important ones or ones of interest. Configuration. The sudo is far can be quite complicated. It is composed of two types of entries, aliases, basic variables, and users specifications, which specify who may run what. The installation installs a default configuration that has no privileges installed for any user. A couple of common configuration changes, there's a spelling mistake there, are to set the path for the super user and to allow members of the wheel group to ex execute all commands after providing their own credentials. Use the following commands to create the etc sudo as the sudo configuration as a root user. So this is a good one to have because we've now got our user in the wheel group. What this is saying that when that user runs sudo they will have access to everything once they've typed in their password which is basically what we want so let's find that there it is there and put that in for detail see men sudoers sudo developers highly recommend using the vice sudo program to whether the sudo is file will provide basic sanity checking like syntax passing file permission to avoid some possible mistakes that lead to vulnerable con configuration okay so I'm not sure if one exists or not but I can try that by sudo etc sudo yeah it does exist and there you can see it just loads up via I believe it's one of the binaries that gets installed when VI is compiled. So if PAM is installed in the system, which it is, we need to add PAM support. And we just copy this configuration in. And change permissions as well. Looks like that's it. So I'm going to come out of this and see if I can actually sudo. Yeah, it's worked. And I need to provide a command. Um, let's try ls. So let's put in my password, which I've done correctly, mostly. Yeah, it's worked. So I've run that as the root. Let's see if we can do something that actually is the root. Yeah, it's it's given me root access. It's remembered my password. I can't remember what the timeout is. If it's a couple of minutes or five minutes or something. But yeah, that seems to have worked. And one more test I can do is touch. Let me put a file into the root's home directory, which I wouldn't normally have access to let alone write access to um, test doesn't exist yeah so I can't even tab it so let's try 
this one's hell slash root. There it is. So let's now remove it. That's fine. So that all works. Okay, so tripwire it's for detecting integrity on files. Um not gonna install that unless I absolutely need to. And it looks like there's another library there. So that is more or less it for the security. Apart from some of these, I'm sure we'll be coming back to the security session uh, section to install certain packages. Probably not all, but some, I'm sure we'll be coming back here. Um, this, just in case you're wondering, we're, we're actually still within a part or a main section of the book called Post Configuration LFS Configuration Extra Software. So. This is the extra software bit we're still doing. So I think the idea is that you do go down these um, these little sections within this part. So this is all the security bit that we've just been through. Um, you can see the next bit is file systems and disk management. So there are some utilities here that you might want to install. For example, DOS FS utils can be useful, especially if you want to create a uh, USB drive, format it with, you know, um, fat uh, partition to lay that to be read across various devices. Um, MDA, ADM, if you're using uh, RAID disks and so on, Parted might be useful. Um, same with the editors, you might want to install Emacs, for example, or Nano or something like that. They've got Vim here. I think that's mainly to do with um, support for the uh, Windows when that comes up, X Windowing System. I'm not going to install any of the extra packages that I would normally install at the moment. And next session, I'm going to start concentrating on actually installing the uh, X Windows. Um, oh, and there's also shells and virtualization there as well under this section. So normally, I think you'd go through here and say, Oh, yeah, I need that, I'll do that, as we have been doing with the security. Um, but being as it is what it what it is security, I thought it was important to go and install certain packages as we have done, which um, will be beneficial to us. So yeah, as I say in the next next video I'll be doing, I will be jumping straight down to the um, windowing. There it is, the window and display managers part, and we'll start to build up the X window system and start to. Um, actually get an environment that's a little bit more easy to use although I think you'd have to admit it's not too onerous having to switch back and forward between the manual on the text browser and our prompt. I, I find the only hard bit to see is the colouring. It it kind of doesn't know the way that um, the Linux from scratch has been formatted so the colouring can be a bit a bit off-putting, a bit difficult to read so you don't have to be careful what you actually highlight to copy. Um, it's a shame that um, there's not code in the um, Beyond Linux from Scratch book to alter the colouring within links to make it more obvious as, as they do with their, for example if I open um, this one, as they do with their commands in little grey boxes and in different fonts. Um, that's a bit, bit of a pity but m maybe that's not possible, maybe they've not looked at that, maybe that's something that somebody may do in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and uh, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you haven't already um, to hear about my future videos, um, BLFS and other things I do. Thank you very much. Goodbye.